I want to thank you for taking this time to, to, during this exciting time in history, to be here in Jerusalem and to have this time to, to visit and talk about the U.S. Embassy move. And I would love to hear, our audience would love to hear from you because we've been following you. Many, many Christians are familiar with who you are and have been following the work that you do. And it's such a blessing and encouragement to see and inspiring to other women, to Christian women, to see a Jewish woman who also is committed to her faith and, and, um, and is operating within the government. It's, it's so inspiring. You're such an inspiration to so Thank many women. Thank you so much. So uh, let's it's a talk. great pleasure for me also to share my views with audience that, as, as we mentioned in our talk, mm -hmm. people of faith. I think that this is the big engine of the world, the big faith, and to realize that we are in a historic era. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, all Israelis are saluting to the President of the United States for making this brave move. Uh, but it's basically facing reality. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem has always been the capital of the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Since Israel was established, it was the capital of the Jewish state. So it's so natural to do mm -hmm. that, but still, so many people around the world are ignoring the very basic facts and mm -hmm. the American leadership now is writing a page in the world's history by doing this, by making this act of uh, being faithful to the truth. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that we're very proud of it and we really believe that it's gonna be just the beginning of a new era of moving all the embassies, all the international embassies to Jerusalem. Well, it's been very encouraging as an American to see our president take leadership, take ownership of this very strategic, important, historic, biblically historic event, and Absolutely. to see the influence that that has had on other nations now moving their embassy, calling for a move. We already have four countries that are following uh, the American decision, and we just have uh, connections to 10 more countries that are in process. And I really hope that by the end of the year, we'll have 10 embassies 10 international flags in our eternal capital, Jerusalem. And I'm sure, I'm sure that after this first wave, we'll have more waves of countries coming back to Jerusalem. Amen. So when, you, when we first heard in America the announcement that the president was going to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, we were shocked. We were kind of like, okay, brace ourselves. Is this going to really happen? And here we are. And we're here um, in preparation to celebrate. How, how did the Israeli government and the Israelis, how did they respond when the news first broke about President Trump? I think people were so happy. People were so happy that our great friend, America, is doing this first step uh, among all countries around the world. And I think that for many Israelis, it was so natural. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the fact that most embassies are in Tel Aviv, this is the unnatural thing. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure some of uh, the people that are viewing this show they know the history, and the history is very clear. We are connected to Jerusalem for 3,000 years. Tel Aviv is a very new city, beautiful city, that has nothing to do to Jewish history, has nothing to do to the deep connection of the Jewish people to the Jewish land. Jerusalem is the symbol of this deep connection, and this is where embassies should be. Now, every sovereign country has the right to decide where its capital is gonna be. Uh, Israel is singled out by the fact that the world doesn't recognize the very natural choose of, of, of Jerusalem. So how is the how is the Israeli how are the Israeli people responding to this move? Um, you know, you hear some news accounts that well, it's a matter of consensus, first of all. Most mm -hmm. Israelis are uh, really happy about it. For Israelis, Jerusalem is not just a city. It's mm -hmm. um, prayers of 2,000 years. Our grand-grandparents were praying to go back to Jerusalem. The Zionist movement is based on the word Zion, which means Jerusalem. So the whole concept of this country, of this the reestablishment of the modern state of Israel is based on Jerusalem. And, and I think this is why this is really the heart and soul of the Jewish people. So it's much bigger than just relocating real estate or relocating buildings from one city to another. It's so much bigger. So what does it mean to you as a, as a woman of faith who sits in this very prominent position as foreign minister, what does it mean to you to be in this position at this strategic time when prophecy is being fulfilled? 
when here we are celebrating this, the 70th anniversary of the rebirth of the modern state of Israel, and now America, the, the largest ally, and of course we see Israel as our dearest friend. How, tell us, tell us what you think about the significance about this time, the president moving the embassy, happening on the 70th anniversary, and prophecy being fulfilled. Um, I think, first of all, I'm part of historic time. I think that I'm fortunate to serve in the foreign ministry. See, since I, I came here to the foreign ministry, one of my biggest dreams was to see all embassies going back to Jerusalem. And President Trump made it possible, uh, made this dream possible, because for many years the foreign ministry uh, gave up the idea that it's possible on the international level, because they said by the time a big important state will make this move, we, we can't do anything. And I, I couldn't believe that we, we can give up on Jerusalem that easy on the international level. And I think that this time is really making uh, historic justice because it, it was unjust uh, to ignore the reality, to ignore history. And, and I think there is a big battle. There is a big battle about yeah. rewriting history. Uh, some of the Arab world is trying to uh, change the way history was uh, actually written. Uh, there is a big scholar that is speaking about the uh, process that the Arab world is going from Mecca to Jerusalem and back. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows that the holiest city to the Muslims is Mecca. It's not Jerusalem. When, when Muslims go and pray on Temple Mount, they put their backs to the holiest place to the Jewish world mm -hmm. because they pray to Mecca. So mm -hmm. it's very clear that the only place that is really the holiest place to the Jewish world is Temple Mount, is Jerusalem, and the fact that the Arab world is trying to take over mm -hmm. those places that for many years uh, Jews were connected to, uh, you know, all history books and all mm -hmm. our Bible is full of it. You know, the Quran doesn't mention Jerusalem even once. Mm -hmm. and, and the Bible is full of Jerusalem and all our prayers about Jerusalem. And as you said, this is an era where prophecies are coming to reality. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the biggest and most beautiful descriptions of, of the prophecies is the fact that children and old people will play together in the streets of Jerusalem. And we see that. <laughs> we walk around those streets and we see uh, young children playing in, in playgrounds and we see old people sitting uh, all around the city. And, and I think it's beautiful, the fact that this city that uh, didn't allow for many years freedom of religion now is allowing to all religions to feel comfortable and natural, Christians, Muslims, everyone can feel comfortable under the Israeli sovereignty. This is why it's so important to everyone around the world to ask for Israeli sovereignty all around Jerusalem. You know, we see you in the United States as a modern day Esther. Oh, thank you. I, ne I never got such a great compliment. To brought, who was brought to this place for such a time as this. Thank you so much. I, I, I appreciate this. Absolutely. Uh, you deserve it. You deserve thank it. You. We're inspired by the work that you do and your passion and your thank commitment you. and your standing firm in, resol in your resolve to your faith. Thank you. Do you think, um, or what do you think the impact, do you think President Trump's decision to acknowledge the, um, that Jerusalem is the capital of the state of Israel. Did that inspire and encourage the Israeli government to move forward? Did you, did, did, did you feel that this was going to be a, a, a significant thing and it was going to change the direction of your government? Because sitting back and watching in the United States, it's like, all right. Israel's finally got a friend in the White House. <laughs> and did it, was, did it serve to inspire you to see President Trump take this in, initiative? And I speak, I, I ask that question from the perspective of the Israeli government and the Israeli people. Uh, first of all, I must say that uh, USA is, is our ally, no matter who mm -hmm. is the president. We, we feel mm -hmm. that the American people and the Israeli people are connected. Mm -hmm. It's much bigger than political decisions. Mm -hmm. I think it's based on values. And this is why it's so important for us to say that this historic decision of, of President Trump is definitely something that we're very proud of. But we're very proud of this very deep and long-going relationship between us and the United States, between us and the American people. I think that for Israelis, Jerusalem is such a natural, as I said, and such a, a deep thing that uh, it's really not um, dependent on the international community's approach. But, but we're definitely proud and happy that 
the international commu community is moving forward because we, we felt like the yeah. international community is a little bit mm -hmm. staying behind the history, staying behind uh, the very basic facts of, of the Middle East. And, and now we feel like the map is being read right and properly and people put the focus on the right things. The fact that Israel is really the most stabilizing thing in the Middle East yes. today. Uh, I call it really a place of light. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we're, we're a light among the nations, the way uh, the Bible is looking at Israel, but we, we really do that in order to bring more peace to the world. Uh, Jerusalem is, is driven from the word peace, and, and I really think that as much as you make uh, the, the, the reality of Jerusalem stronger, you, you, you bring peace to the world. And, Absolutely. And this is why I think most Israelis are very happy about it. You made a statement about Zionism. You talked about yes. Zionism at the Moskowitz Freedom Prize yes. the other night. Talk about, talk about that, the inspiration of Zionism and how important that is to the heart and the psyche of the Israeli. I think Zionism is not just about another national movement uh, of establishing a state. Since Israel was established and uh, we were just celebrating 120 years for the birth of our first woman Prime Minister, Golda Meir, and Golda Meir was establishing the, the Israel International uh, Cooperation Agency. And this is something very unique for foreign ministries because most foreign ministries, when they give out foreign aid, they give out money. And Israel was sharing knowledge. And this is something very unique about the way Israel is working. We don't see ourselves as a country that needs just to take care of its own people. We see ourselves as a country that has universal, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in, excuse me, in universal responsibility. And this is why we share our knowledge with so many countries around the world about water technologies, about agriculture, about cyber technology. All this startup nation is, is here to serve the world, not just the Israeli economy. And this is why the Zionist movement is such a great success, because this is not just about taking care of ourselves. This is really delivering a message to the world. Very good. Is there a prime minister? Um, opportunity in your future? Oh, thank you for, for <laughs> this compliment. At the moment, uh, I'm, I'm very happy for my position in the foreign ministry, the fact that I speak out to the world. Uh, I also would like to deal with education. It's very important. I think that this is the top priority issue for every nation. And followed by this, I think that uh, your question will be more relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank God you. bless you in everything that you, you do. God bless you and all the, all the people that are viewing this show. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you.